So, and this is the bit, the most important bit, the hook link. The first thing you do before you go to the trouble of tying up a hook link is make sure it's sharp. Now obviously 99% of the time they are going to be sharp, but you're always going to get the odd one that's turned over in the packet and that. So just make sure it's a sharp one. And the way I do that is on my finger now, and you can see it digs straight away. I'm not trying to dig that in, you know, with lots of pressure. I'm literally with the lightest pressure, just running it across my nail and it sticks. If it slips or scratches in any way, throw it out. It's not sharp enough. Bristle filament in 20 pounds. Now, it looks just like normal mono, but I, I can promise you it's a very different material altogether. It's completely memory free and ever so stiff. You can see how stiff this is, really stiff. Um, if you have trouble tying up any hook links in 20 pound, then you know, you always start off with the 15. That is a little bit easier to tie up with. I prefer the 20, it's just that little bit stronger. Now I'll show you what I mean about memory free as well. If you used to do this, screw it all up, do it proper. If you used to do that with a little bit of a mono, you're never going to recover it, are you? You know, it's ruined. But with this stuff, like I say, it's completely memory free. You will get the kinks out of it very easily. So when you're tying up the hook links, don't worry too much if you make little kinks and that here and there and little twists, you can recover it afterwards. That's the whole purpose of using this material. So make sure that's nice and smooth. Oh, already got a hook out. And I'll show you how I tie this. This is called a snail knot. Um, I only discovered the actual name for this knot recently, a few months ago. Yeah, I've been actually using it for ugh, since early days at Yateley. Um, I always thought it was called a Domoff knot, but apparently not. Anyway, all I've done, I've slid the hook on, make a nice big loop, Now, whenever you're trying to learn a new knot, you need to know exactly what you're trying to do. You know, some people tie it differently, they use different actions with their hands. As long as you know, understand what you're trying to achieve, then any knot's easy to tie and easy to learn. So, basically, how I always say with this knot is, imagine that there was a break in this material and you're trying to wrap this little piece around those two pieces there. That's all I'm trying to do, because I'm likely to lose you at this next point. I'll make that loop a little bit smaller. Remember, I'm going to wrap this around and around those two top pieces. And how I do it is I go once, twice, three times. You can see this bottom bit is wrapped around the top bit. That's what you're trying to achieve. And you might find an easier way of doing it, but I find just twisting the fingers is ever so simple. Three, and you probably want about eight turns, seven or eight turns. Now remember this material is really, really stiff. If I was to slacken off on this, it'll all go pear-shaped, it'll all bunch up. So you need to keep this stiff and keep this tight at all times. So now trap that with your fingers, wet it first. Trap that with your fingers, otherwise it's all gonna, all gonna go pear-shaped. And then you wanna tighten from this end. Now don't tighten in a straight line because that's likely to damage where you're curling it through the eye. It's, there's always gonna be a bit of a kink, but try to do it that way and pull the loop tight like so and that causes less damage to this piece of material. Next step is to tighten this end, the loose tag, like so and I've not over tightened there, I've just tightened it up loosely if you like. So there it is, the knot's perfectly on the shank, the turns aren't overlapping, you know, that, that they're all butted up alongside each other nice and neat and then again wet it and then rather than pulling that knot down to the eye with your hand from, from this direction, slide it down with your nail. Again, that causes less damage to the material. So like so. Remember, it's not tightened fully yet. And then it's ready to tighten fully. Like so. And with the use of the baiting needle, there you go. So there's no damage, it's all perfect. Nice, neat knot. Right. Next step is to put on a little ring. Now, there's three or four different sizes of the, of the Drennan ring. You've got like a micro ring, mini ring, small ring, and a medium ring. You want to go for the mini sized ring, which is the second smallest. And I've got one of these here, I'm sure, in my little clam box.
So that goes on there like so. Pass the leftover tag back through the eye and that forms the D. Now to begin with, you want to pull that up tight because you've got to blob the end of it. So it's pulled up tight and we're going to chop that off probably about seven or eight mil away from my fingernails. Now the next step, you've got to blob this with a lighter. So make sure all the important bit, the actual knot and the hook link material is protected by your hands before you do that. And you want to blob that leaving three or four mil above the eye still. So it's a nice blob. Don't dab it with your fingers or anything afterwards. Leave it nice and round and neat and shiny. It's, that's the neatest way. And then again, with the old baiting needle that doubles as a rig tool, you make your loop perfectly round. And that's why I like these particular crochet needles because they've got a, a wide diameter at the bottom. So there you go, perfect D. Next, chop it off like so, and that is the actual hook link material. That is the actual hook link, the, the chod rig section, if you like. Now, I'll tie up loads of these. Um, you know, quite often in the middle of the night, you'll catch a bream or a tench or something, and I really don't want to be going through the palaver to retime one of those at two o'clock in the morning. So I'll tie up quite a few, and I'll store them in this little tube. So I'm always ready to go and always ready to put a new hook on any time of the day or night. Now this is probably the knot that most people have trouble with. You know, they'll, they'll get all of this perfect, they'll spend ages mastering that knot and they'll get it all nice and neat, but then they muck it up when they come to tie it to the swivel. And th yet, th this is probably the easiest knot out of all of them. Now literally, obviously it depends on the, on the height of the hook link that you want it, but all I'm doing is a couple of turns here, I've gone through the swivel, Go once, twice around the bristle filament, and then back through the first knot. I won't pull it up tight just yet so you can see exactly what I've done. But I've gone round the bristle filament twice, through the swivel, round the bristle filament twice, and back through the first loop that you've created. It's basically a blood knot, half blood knot even. Wet it down like you do with every knot. Get the old baiting tool out again and then tighten it up and be careful when you tighten. Now, you can see that's a tiny little knot. There's only two turns there, you know, and compared to like trying to tie a grinner or a whipping knot, it's so much easier and so much simpler. You've got to remember this material is ever so stiff. Um, if you was to do that same knot, just a two turn blood knot with any type of mono amnesia or anything, it would slip and then break. Because this stuff is so stiff, I don't know, I always liken it to the pike angler. You know of a wire trace, um, a pike angler can put a swivel on the end of his wire trace, spin the trace over and over again, twisting it, and it'll never come undone. This isn't quite wire trace, but if you look at it as a cross between wire and mono, you can get away with a different knot to what you would normally do with mono. And I've been using that knot since I've been using the chod rigs and the inch stiff links, and I've, I've never had a problem with it. But, chop that off. Just in case you're worried, do the old blob again. All looks a little bit skew with now, so you want to make sure that's all straight before finishing them off. And then I put a curve in it with my fingers, ever so easy. And there you go. Nice and neat, ever so easy to tie up. And once you've got a few of these tied up spare, then it's easy to put a new one on once you've got a blunt hook. So there you go. Chod rig, all done and ready to go.